chairman and CEO of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, NIDCOM, Honorable Dr. Abike Dabiri Erewa, was a guest of the Nigerian Canadian based talk show host Talk With Mo. Talks on life as a journalist, politician, mother, wife, public official, and lots more. It is unmissable. Just stick around for the details. Plus, a Nigerian property expert based in the United Kingdom, Mr. Femi Edu, turned an author of a book, The Number One Mission. It is very informative and a diplomat's delight. And a Nigerian middleweight boxing champion based in Houston, United States of America, Rafael Igbokwe, also known as Ralph Trouble, has visited the NIDCOM chairman CEO, Honorable Dr. Abike Dabiri Erewa, and also visited the Cairo Children's Home where he donated some food items. Do not forget our complimentary segments by the Association of Nigerian Physicians in the Americas, AMPA, and of course, our diaspora of the moment. This is your favorite show, The Diaspora. I am Shaliwajila, your anchor. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Let's begin with the talk show with Mo, as she takes on Need Combos and a reverting conversation. Take a listen. For me, it was like journalism called me. Because <laughs> when I was at the University of Ife, I actually wanted to study political science, which is what I was admitted for. But when I got to Ife, they said because I had a P7 in mathematics, I couldn't do political science, so I had to change my course to English. English. So I ended up studying English. And then I took it very seriously. I mean, was this very serious student. And then I got posted to do my NYSE in Benin. in Benin. And I was posted to the news agency of Nigeria. So when I got to the news agency of Nigeria, I didn't work like, oh, I'm just a corporate. Mm -hmm. When I got there, I started learning how to write stories. I followed them on assignments. I will just write. They will read correct. Nobody was telling me to do that. But I was just doing it because I was a youth corporate and I wanted to learn. So there was this day, there was nobody to cover the assignment. It was that youth corporate. And I was quite smallish then. It was that youth corporate that had to go and cover the assignment. But guess what, I was prepared. And it was a big assignment. So I went cover the assignment and they didn't need to correct anything and it made front page news. I know with the news agency, you don't know the writer, it's just a damn report. But I was so excited that, oh my God, I wrote that story. So after, after that, I was given assignments to cover and I was like a full you know, worker with them. And then after I got employed in Bendel Television hmm. in Benin and I started doing television. I was reading, doing programs and all that. And then I said, well, I think I should take this as a profession. But I didn't stop there because it was comfortable having mm -hmm. a job. I now left, resigned. I went to University of Lagos to do my master's in mass communication. Interesting. Interesting. And then you transitioned into NTA. Yeah. And so I got a job. I worked with Prime Television, uh, Late Man Canal Room, and still rest in place. Then NTA employed me, started with Channel 7, mm -hmm. moved to Network, and then posted to the first lady then, Mrs. Papakida, yeah. where I learned a lot. And then Newsline, which was uh, under Frank Willis, and then later I started presenting Newsline. Yes. Very interesting. And then I transitioned to politics. And you had a lot of exciting news to cover. I remember uh, the one that was really vivid was about Mary, the Mary. miracle, yeah. the miracle baby that three mothers were yes, claiming. Yes. And it was how you painstakingly stayed with that story yeah, for, for eight years. Eight years, yeah. almost a decade. Yeah. But you because, resolved it. Yeah, because that time, the only thing that could resolve it was the DNA. And there was nothing like DNA in our part of the world then. But we resolved it. But then, most importantly, is the fact that. Um, you do stories like that beyond the call of duty. You get in your car at 6 a.m. in the morning to trace something you were told. You don't have to wait, you know, for the money to do it. You don't have to wait. You just, you know, work with people that have a passion, also very devoted cameraman. You call the driver, listen, we're going to this place. So we were able to do that for eight years. And you know what? Um, Mary, her name is no longer Mary, but she's graduated. She's, she, she was on my scholarship all through. Uh, she's graduated now. She's a, a big girl now. Who is the real Abike Dabiri? 
it can be more real than you're saying. I mean, I meant to just a few days ago. This is tough doing this interview because of the time schedule, but it's like, you're a woman. I know what it is to be a female in this profession. And it was like, no, let me just do it. What does it cost me? But at least let me just support another woman. You know, so that's me. I, I don't think there's more. Like, sometimes you hear negative stories, but those things don't bother you. But um, uh, I got two children, two granddaughters, a wonderful husband, a great family, and um, just try to be focused on what you do. Mm. And uh, my guiding philosophy is that you know, no matter what, try to impact somebody else's life. Mm. You never know where, where, where it gets you. And it's not about how much money you have in your account, it's about how many lives you're able to touch. Yeah. And, and isn't that what you did when you were a um, member of the House of Reps? What motivated you into politics? Was it this call of duty going beyond this call of duty? Because there's much more. Yeah. Again, I think it was just destiny. I, um, Father Cooker, now Bishop Cooker, nominated me for a program at Harvard University. It was a program for, for leaders in the developing economy. So I was the only journalist in the program. Everybody was a prime minister, a minister, and like from Nigeria with three. The late uh, minister of mm -hmm. was on the program. So it, was, it challenged you to do something about leadership in yes. your country. So when I got back to the NTA, for a couple of months, I was not allowed to present Newsline. It was like, oh, okay, next Sunday. But I didn't bother. So I had more time to do other things. And then it kept occurring to me that, listen, you can. And then actually people started talking to me. It's like you're having a conversation. I remember one with the first person was Dele Alaki, mm -hmm. Honorable Dele Alaki, Minister of Solid Minerals. Mm -hmm. We're having this conversation. So I, well, they try it now. I'm like, oh, me, I can't contest to. Then another person speaks to me and says, why don't you give it a shot? Mm -hmm. I just got up one of these days, went to Ikorudu, saw the chap who was the secretary of the A Alliance for Demo AD then. Yes. And then asked him, listen, what's your name? Oh, I'm Erobubu. Okay, this is the compound. This is your ward. Then I started attending ward meetings. So I'll go to the lowest, the, the ward, which is the um, deepest arm of your local government. You know? The real grassroots the real of grassroots. the grassroots. So I'll be sitting with them. They'll look at me. Now, the face helped. I was a familiar face on television. Face. Ah, Woman television, what's she doing here? I'll sit with them, we'll have fun, but I was enjoying it. So I did that for four months, and then I started working with the women, the youth, the elderly. So I tried to have a feel of what it was like. So after four months, and I went to, I first saw Mr. Lurebi Tinumbu, who was the wife of the governor then, and told her, I want to do this. And she said, Listen, we've got to you know, tell. Ashwaju to who was the leader of the party then. Then, when the opportunity came, I told Ashwaju. And he said, listen, we'll give you all the support. And the rest is history. It was tough. Don't, don't make it sound, it's not as simple as that, but we know after it was tough. And it's tough being a woman in politics. But you must have a guiding philosophy. You must have somebody, something that drives you. You must have family support. You must have people who genuinely believe in you. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, have faith in your God and just put in your best. Many thanks Mama Diaspora for being an inspiration to many. From realtor to author, Mr. Yemi Edu is the author of the book The Number One Mission, the Nigerian High Commission, United Kingdom. It was presented to the public recently in Abuja. What inspired the book? What's the story behind this book? I realized that Nigeria had 22 properties in the UK. I realized that it's not just the ambassador or the high commissioner as we are in the UK and all the Commonwealth countries, that you have about 10 ambassadors doing various things. I realized that, you know, um, there are high defense attache. So you have the naval, you have the army, you have the police in each embassy. So it got me interested and I was taking notes. Then I looked at the history of Nigeria and Britain and realized that our first high commissioner in the United Kingdom 
was Chief Matthew Mbu. He himself is a very interesting gentleman because he still holds the record as the youngest um, minister ever appointed in Nigeria before the age of 25. And he has the distinction of being the first High Commissioner in the UK and the first ambassador of Nigeria to the United States. So I, as I was getting, gathering content for my own uh, education, I realized that this will benefit a lot of people. Um, you know, most men and uh, ladies love cars. When I came across the Rolls Royce that was bought by Sir Abubakar Tafar Balewa in 1959, the Phantom 5 that has, that has had many Nigerian leaders taking a ride in it. I think it's only two or three Nigerian leaders have not been in that car. And the car is still running. I see that we have some things to celebrate as a people, you know. There are enough negatives out there. We should try and highlight our positives. And that's why I did it. For Nigerians in the diaspora, we say that we want them to do what he means doing. But beyond even Nigerians in the diaspora, the measure, Prince Brooks, I'm going to embarrass you. Can you come up here for a moment? Yeah, me, you inspire people like Chris Brooks. Chris Brooks is African-American. He's American, but he's now a Nigerian. Wow. He did his DNA. He met people like Yemi in the diaspora, was inspired by who the Nigerian is, the energy that we have as a people. So he went far, did his DNA, and happily, because that's what he wanted, his DNA shows that he is Nigerian. And not only that, he now did a book, and that's the coincidence. He's also done a book called Omo Wale, which is I've Returned Home. Why Nigerians are jackpying, Omo Wale is coming back home. And so I think this is just a beautiful coincidence that we have these two great men that have done books on Nigeria. Chris, what's your name again? Omo Wale, what's the second one, Adamu? Which is the third one? Chizoba. Uh -huh. <laughs> And Chris is going back nowhere. So talk to Yemi. Chris, uh, you see, I've made two friends now. He's going to show you how to get properties in Nigeria. Because Chris wants to have a home here. He wants to bring his family back here. He wants to invest in Nigeria because he believes that he's not just Nigeria, he's of the greatest country in the world. So we have our challenges. No doubt about it. But nobody can fix those challenges but ourselves. Not even just government. Government and every one of us, we need to play our role. Yemi, you are playing your own role. And we appreciate you, we respect you, and we celebrate you. Our friend Yemi has written this book. I would like to say on our behalf, I once again congratulate you. I urge stakeholders, sponsors, to do everything to keep this book alive to give it the deserved attention. Uh, what Yemi Edu and his team have done by writing this wonderful book is to add to the body of existing literature in terms of our history, in terms of diplomacy, and in terms of knowledge about some of the important developments that have taken place. I'm talking specifically about Nigeria's presence in the United Kingdom. And he has done well. Many thanks, Mr. Edu for keeping the high-profile diplomatic history. Ralph Igbokwe, a.k.a. Ralph Trouble, visited Nidkombos in Abuja, as well as the Karo Children's Home to give back to the community. When he was growing up, we know him as uh, Michael Jackson. Oh, wow. Yes, because he likes to dance. Exactly, he likes wow. to dance Michael Jackson a lot. Yeah. So, but um, with everything he has actually experienced in life, he had to put all of that into boxing. And when he came to Nigeria, I was like, oh, "What are you doing here?" He said, "I came over myself." I said, "You serious? Okay." Because it's very hard for you to see the children in diaspora come to Nigeria all by themselves. Mm. So, yeah. Man, you are the bomb. <laughs> Obviously, you know, you feel like a mother to us. Uh -huh. You might not know this because maybe we don't speak that much about it, but we appreciate you. Uh -huh. From a distance, we appreciate you. And if you don't mind, I need to give you a hug, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> Or when you when you're on 
television, what we see is a mother. What's crazy about Nigeria, I have more fans here than in America. Like, wow. Like I want to one day fight here. I want to make a difference. I love children. Children have a special place in my heart. So like maybe like visit orphanage and see them. Like just just being in Nigeria, I'm happy. Like I feel like this is the best vacation or best time I've had in my life. Like so much has been in, in Brando and just this two months. So I'm thankful again for all you guys having me. Like you guys are welcoming me as a family. Thank you again. Also, in this 12 years, it doesn't feel like I, I've been gone for so long. But I'm like. Every now I'm, I'm coming back. You guys will be tired of seeing me. Like I'll be, uh -huh. I'll be returning to Nigeria. Like every there, there, there won't be another 12 years I'll be gone. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Not even one year. Like I'll be coming back. I, I love this Nigeria. This, this is my home. Uh -huh. So I'm happy. Thanks again. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad to, to, to thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so well. I mean, let's appreciate. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for making no, me proud no, to be a Nigerian. No, thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank you for, for making me a proud Nigerian mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you, and then, like you said, I mean, you haven't been home for 12 years. You came home, and this has been the best. I know the younger ones will look up to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I want you to be a role model, an ambassador. When you get back to America, tell good stories about your country. Always. And then, we want to work with you. There's a lot you can do with the young people in Nigeria. Yeah. Mentor them. Train them in boxing. Mm. You know, there are many talents out there that can do much of So really, we're proud of you. Uh, continue to be a good ambassador of your country, Nigeria. And hopefully when we're in America, we'll meet you again. And uh, link you up with other Nigerians that we're working with. There's so much we can do together. There's so much that that's work for you to contribute to the development of our own country. And we want to do that. Thank you. Well, Very interactive uh, interview. All right. Uh, what What do you do? I uh, box professionally in the United States, Houston, Texas, to be exact. And I also do real estate. Okay. Right. Uh, which category of boxing? I'm a, my, I'm a middleweight boxer. My current record is 18 and three. Yes. 18 wins, three losses. 18 wins. 18 wins, and three losses. That's massive. Three losses. How many knockouts? Uh, 11 knockouts. Eleven, I Give your opponent. What was the latest fight? My latest fight was uh, the seventh of October in two thousand. This this past year. So I won unanimous decision. Okay. So how do you find Nigeria? Oh, I love this. This Nigeria is my home. So I'm, I'm even upset with myself that it's been twelve years since I've been back. But it won't be another twelve years. I'll be coming back. They'll be tired of seeing me. So Let's take a short break. Keep watching the diaspora. This walk that you're walking, even though it was known as the point of no return, we see it now as the joy of return. The spirit of Africa could not be broken by the transatlantic slave trade. You cannot lose the spirit. And the divine force, the spirit of Africa, has brought us back today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Travel. Travel legitimately. Now, to our complimentary segment of health tips by the Association of Nigerian Physicians in the Americas, AMPA. I'm here today.
today to talk to you a little bit about health and wellness. Health and wellness is also performed by identifying and treating disease, but also by promoting health by healthy practices that you can perform on your own as an individual without necessarily going to see your physician. These include, number one, maintaining a healthy weight. A healthy weight as calculated by your body mass index is your weight in relation to your height. For instance, somebody who is six feet should or could weigh the same as somebody who is five feet if that person is overweight. So for every weight, there is an expectation where your weight should be that is a healthy calculated weight. And now to our diaspora of the moment. Our diaspora of the moment is Dr. Philip Uzua. Dr. Philip is a pediatrician who is based in New York. He is a Nigerian from Nteje, an industrious town in Ogi, Anambra State. His father was a famous engineer and his mother a school principal. He has more than 20 years experience of practice in this field. He is also the president and CEO of Montefiore Medicine, which is one of the largest healthcare organizations in the United States. He is one of the finest and most recognized medical doctors in the United States of America. Dr. Philip is not just a world acclaimed medical practitioner. He is a teacher, professor, and a writer of several publications that have helped advance the medical field. Dr. Philip earned his medical degree certification at the University of Ibadan and did his internship at the University of Nigerian Teaching Hospital before proceeding to Southern California for his master's program, after which he got his PhD from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Recently, he was named the Chief Executive Officer of Montefiore Medicine, the umbrella organization for Montefiore Health Systems, and Albert Einstein College of Medicine. He started his new role on the 15th of November 2019, succeeding Stephen M. Sefire, who retired after 40 years of service to Einstein and Montefiore. Congratulations, Dr. Philip Ozua. We celebrate you as our diaspora of the moment. This has been the diaspora this week. Join us again next week and stay positive. Bye for now.